Hello, I'm Atubo George. Now we continue from 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And we are going, now we stopped at verse 5 yesterday. So we're going to pick up from there and we're going to continue. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive our daily bread today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we are filled with the abundance of it. Thank you for your truth that will minister to our hearts. And Holy Spirit, you will not hold back anything that is profitable to us. We will enjoy the whole of heaven. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bodies are being lifted right now. Yokes are being destroyed. Men are coming to the place of truth because the word of the Lord is coming to their hearts right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and we just go from verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsel of the heart, and then shall every man have his place. Two things the Lord is going to do when he comes. He is going to bring the hidden things. He's going to bring to light the hidden things in darkness. Now, this is why, as a, as a minister or as a custodian of the mysteries of God, you're not concerned about people thinking you're right or you're wrong. No, that's none of your business. You know, sometimes we try to look good in the eyes of people. So we, we try to explain the way we live. We try to... Now, if it is not for the purpose of teaching, you have no business trying to explain yourself to anyone. You see, because most times when you obey the Lord, and, and, and it's a principle, the Bible says, the wisdom of God is foolishness to men. So if you're someone who have made up your mind to always obey the Lord, in the sight of men, you will always look foolish. Now, what does that mean? It means if you are trying to be the one who wants everybody to understand him, oh, you will spend the rest of your life explaining every action or every thought of yours. But I found out this to be true. This is by experience. Now, see, when God commands you to do something, just keep doing it. The result will do the explanation for people. I'm telling you, the result will always do the explanation. You know, sometimes you take some and you say, wow, you want to destroy yourself? You want to kill yourself? Do you, do you, hey, hey, you know, people are scared for your life. <laughs> it's God. But you see, at the end of the day, the same people will come to you and say, why didn't he tell us that he had it all figured out? But the truth is, you didn't have it all figured out. The only thing you had figured out is that you will hear the voice of God and he can never be wrong. That's the only thing we got figured out, praise God. Now, if, if that's all you know, you are made. I'm telling you the truth. You say, well, if all you know is that, see, God can never be wrong. So whatever he tells me to do, I'll just do it. Whether I understand it yet or not, I'll just do it. If that's all you've got figured out in life, I'm telling you the truth, you are made. Because men will always think, this guy is deceiving us. He, he's got the whole thing planned out. You know how sometimes someone say, um, okay, I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to do this project. And someone's like, how? You? How, how are you going to do it? Where will you get the money from? Where will you get the funds from? So don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll just do it. No, explain to The truth is you don't have any explanation to give. You, you don't know that part yet, praise God. And, and then they leave you. And then the voice of God comes. So go do this, go do this. And then you go do it. And then the money comes. And then they see you doing that. They say, ah, you were keeping that secret from us. You truly didn't know that part, praise God. So he says, but now that's why he says, on that day when the Lord comes, he will bring out the hidden things of darkness. Those things that people didn't know. Now, hidden things of darkness doesn't mean only bad things. It simply means the things that were done in the dark or in the secret. Now, for example, you pray in the secret place. You pray in the dark. Men never see you pray. See? And then, but they see results in your life. So that I wonder. How are you achieving those results? This guy must be so intelligent. It's not intelligence. See, on that day, it's the Lord that's going to show why everybody's sleeping at night. The agonizing prayer that you pray. It's the Lord that's going to show it. Oh, so this was it. Ah, we, we misjudged you. See, that's why it says, don't judge anything before the time. 
He said, when the Lord manifests the hidden things of darkness and make manifest the counsel, the thoughts of the heart, then men shall have, every man shall have praise of God. Praise God. Then verse 6. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no man or no one of you be puffed up for one against the other. Now he says, look, I've transferred this, this attitude, I've transferred this lifestyle between me and Apollos. Apollos was a fellow minister of the gospel. He says, why did we do it? See, we live our lives before, before the Lord, that he will be our judge. Not, not our intelligence, not the smart way we do things. No, let God be our judge because we obey him. Praise God. So he says, he says, the reason is so that no man, no one of you would think of men above that which is written. See, we are who we are. Praise God. We are who we are. <laughs> then he says, for, verse 7, For who maketh thee to differ from one another? And what hast thou that thou did not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory? As if thou hast not received it. See, you know, sometimes you, you find preachers say these things like this. You don't know the price that I have paid to be where I am. That is wrong. It's wrong. You know, you, you hear that it sounds, it sounds, um, it sounds conk, you know, in, in, in faith. It sounds like, yes, a preacher must have suffered. A preacher must have done, you know, he must have paid the price to be enjoyed. Brothers and sisters, there is no price to be paid than obedience. You know, sometimes people overemphasize dying to self. You know, you hear people say, you must die to self, you must die to self. And people get confused about what it means to die to self. To die to self simply means to live a life of obedience. Now, someone says, oh, I want to die to self. You know, I think I've talked about this, you know, in some other broadcast. Someone says, I want to die to self. So, okay, I'll stop eating three square meals. I'll be eating once a, once a day now because I want to die to self. You will lose weight. And eventually, you begin to look unhealthy. <laughs> Praise God. And, and, and at the end of the day, you didn't die to self because the things in your heart are still there in your heart. See, because you don't do these things by yourself. So when we talk about dying to self, we are saying, it's, it's not something you do intentionally. You cannot intentionally die to self. You can't. You dying to self will be the, the result of the right things that you do. So it is not you that will say, I am dead to self. No, it is people that will realize that you are dead to self. For you, you will spend your life obeying the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, so you want to travel for vacation, for example. And then you've made all the plans and, and, and doing. And then while you're meditating and okay, so, so how do. And then the voice of the Lord comes to you and says, Son, you never asked me about this vacation you want to take. You didn't ask me if I have assignment or I have something for you to do in this period. Oh, okay, Lord. So what do you want me to do? And God said, I don't want you to go on this vacation now postpone it because I want you to do so and so and so. I said, okay, sir. Thank you, Lord. Now I remember that that happened to me just in the month of March. Yeah, in the month of March. Now I had planned how to travel. I was supposed to go somewhere. And <clears throat> while I was preparing for it, and the word of the Lord came to me. He says, son, I want you to fast for 21 days and I want you to hold these meetings. And this is these are the things I wanted to I want you to do. Now that just spoiled the whole plans that I had. So I said, like, okay. Thank you, sir. I'll do it. So is he going to travel? I don't know. Praise <laughs> God. And then we got into that first thing. And guess what? And we entered into the whole COVID-19 season. And then the whole borders were shut down. Now I was thinking, what if I just did my own thing and travel and got stuck outside the country? See. So it, it, it pays to obey the Lord. But when you obey the Lord, now some say, ah, but I thought you, you wanted to travel before. Uh, and well, it's been postponed. That's dying to self. Now I didn't intend, oh, I'm, I'm dead. You know, sometimes the way we communicate these things make people confused and make them go into error. 
Now, you don't emphasize the point that I, the reason I chose not to eat was because the word of the Lord came to me and told me to fast for those days. See, but you want to communicate, do you know the last time I ate food? You're misleading people. See, because you didn't wake up to say, I'm not going to eat. If you did that, now that's why, you know, you, you hear people, somebody was fasting and he died while he was fasting because he was fasting for 40 days. <laughs> you see, why did, you know, people begin to ask the question, but he was praying to God. Why did the Lord command him to go on that fast? He, he was fasting for religious sake. He was fasting because he wants to tell, he said, I want to be known that I have fasted for 40 days. So he was seeking his own glory, most likely. If the Lord commands you to fast for 100 days, I will assure you of one thing. He is going to give you food to eat that nobody knows about. So you are going to fast for 100 days and people will look at you and say, I don't get how are you sustaining yourself? And then you tell them, I have a meat to eat that you don't know about. Praise God. <laughs> That's what you tell them. I have a meat to eat that you don't know of. Like Jesus told his disciples. Because you yourself will realize, I'm not even hungry. See? Praise God. And that's how it works. Why? Because the one who calls you will sustain you. Moses didn't go up that mountain thinking he was going to fast for 40 days. See? Everyone who has done, you know, no, no, um, Daniel, for example, say 21 days fast. Daniel's, you know, 21 days fast. So now we fast for 21. Daniel didn't set out to fast for 21 days. He set out to seek the mind of God. And the more he sought the mind of God, the more days were going by until he got it. Yes. So he had a focus. And someone said, I just want to fast for 40 days. So what are you fasting for? I just want to be more holy. Okay. To be dead to self means to obey the Lord completely. So if the Lord is not giving you words to obey, then you're not dying to any self. You're just stabbing your body. And that may affect your health. Praise God. You don't receive anything because you fasted. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I fasted 40 days. After 40 days, I received power from the Lord. See, see, when Jesus fasted 40 days, he came back with power. When Moses fasted 40 days, his face. And you are doing 40 days fasting. Every day you are just sitting there wondering, oh God, today, today should come and pass. Oh. Today should come and pass. Oh, oh. I mean, I've tried oh. day five. Mm, I'm going to, I'm going to, no, nothing is going on there. Moses came out because of the koinonia, the thing, the fellowship he was having with the Lord. It was the Lord that told him, Moses, come up this mountain, let's talk. And he was with the Lord. He, he couldn't leave. You, you can't be in the presence of God and you be thinking, of, hey, hey, my, my, my mother is calling me, my brother. Oh, uh, the, the, the people, come on. You just be there when you are done. So Moses didn't go up there, my father, I want your glory. Let, let my face reflect your glory. La kabaya, kabaya. No, he just followed the Lord. You know, that's why Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 18. He says, How, however, or how be it, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? I'll explain what that means tomorrow. Praise God, because our time is up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I declare over everyone listening and watching right now. Today, let a miracle happen in their lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.